Hey, this is Evan Brewer with jamplay.com. In my uh, previous beginner series, we focused on some right hand techniques, just getting you introduced to some of the things that I use all the time, some things that I find to be useful. I'd like to briefly recap on those and then definitely continue to build on those lessons. The main thing we talked about last time was just getting an intro into going down and up with your thumb, using your thumb like a pick. Now I find this to be extremely useful, so I wanna pass it along to you guys. I think that you'll enjoy it, and I think you'll find that you'll, you're able to achieve different feels and different levels of speed uh, with ease and that's why I use it a lot because it has a different sound a different feel than when you use your traditional finger style so it's definitely something that I think all players should at least visit I guess the best way to dive in is to just start kind of recap where we left off so what I do is I go down with my thumb you want to be able to strike down with your thumb through the string and land on the higher string. So I'm going through my E string and landing on my A. And right now I'm not focusing on going up with my thumb yet, just a down stroke. And then you want to be able to switch strings cleanly. E, A, D, G. So once you feel comfortable with that, you'll want to start integrating the up stroke because right now we're just going down. And when, when I, you notice my thumb's going up, but I'm purposely avoiding hitting the string. So all I'm going to do is allow my thumb to hit the string and about half of my thumbnail, the string essentially goes right through there, if that makes sense. So. Sometimes it's easier to do it on a fretted note so that you can mute in between. So we'll do it off the G. Now I'm on the C, third fret A string. Now I'm on the F, third fret D string. Now I'm on the B flat, third fret G string. So you want to develop like a, a good thing to do is pull up a metronome and have a pulse, so. The advantage is you get a strong downbeat. You want to be comfortable doing it on all strings. Any combination. So that's really that you're going to be your main starting point. Once you get that under your belt, there's a lot you can do from there. Um, I think the best way would be to kind of break it up into series. So we'll start with that, focusing on that, and um, we're gonna kind of build from there, so. All right, so now that you've got that under your hands, let's talk about some of the ways you can use that. We never wanna get caught in the trap of thinking that a particular right hand technique is indicative of a style. We're just talking about a way to generate a note, just a way to strike the string. So don't feel like if you're doing a, what would be called a slap technique that would normally be associated with funk, that you can only play funk music with that. Don't think that if you're playing with your fingers that you can only play smooth style bass with that. Or if you're playing with a pick, you have to be playing rock bass. This is just a way to generate a note. There's a lot of creativity to be found in taking techniques that are normally associated with a genre and then applying them to another genre. That's a great way to be an individual, to find your own sound. I think I'll just play a couple examples of kind of how I use the technique. One would be kind of like a replicating like a uh, finger funk kind of sound, like a... Yeah, 
aside from the last bar, all I was doing was just going down and up with my thumb, you know, just like what we just showed you. So that's one example, and that would be a technique that normally you might hear uh, played with the finger. <laughs> But you get a whole different sound and a whole different feel and attack by doing it with your thumb. A general thing that I like to do is try to make sure I can play any line with any right hand technique. And that gives me versatility. So if a producer, if I'm playing a line like that and a producer says, hey, you know, with the fingers it's not really as aggressive as I would like. Well then I can either pick up a pick or I can use my thumb and I can give him more grit or more uh, of an aggressive sound. There's also just a different rhythmic feel when you use your thumb. Another great example of what to do with that would be like a punk type riff, like where you would normally be using a pick. It might be, uh, I'm just kind of making stuff up, but let's say it's like. You know, that's something where if you were bouncing back and forth between finger style, you might not have the advantage of picking up a pick for that part, but you want that same feel. So that's a great example to use your thumb like. So that way you can switch in between your finger style and your thumb technique and get the pick sound without having to say, okay, where am I gonna have my pick? Am I gonna have it in my mouth or stuck up under my pickup? Or you can eliminate a lot of that because live, you're not always gonna have the ability to just grab a pick in the milliseconds you have before a riff comes in. So I use it for stuff like that as well. Um, I also use it for kind of a, uh, less aggressive and more subdued thing where I'll palm mute, palm mute back by the bridge and kind of just so that gives you a uh, the rhythmic qualities of like a slap bass without the aggressive nature of a slap bass. So let's say I was on a gig where I was accompanying a singer-songwriter uh, that played acoustic guitar and sang, but we didn't have a drummer, it was just me and the songwriter. Well, I'm gonna wanna be a little more rhythmic than like. Like that would be great if I had the drummer in the background doing his thing. But without that, I want to establish heavy rhythm for her. But I don't want to, because of the context, I don't want to be just all out slapping. So I'll use like the muted technique. So I can still have a subdued tone that won't encroach on what the guitar player is trying to do, but I can establish a heavy rhythm and a little bit more of a syncopation. There's like infinite ways you can use the thumb technique, and so much of that is just gonna be you getting it under your hands and experimenting, you know, and don't be afraid to venture into new territory. I've shown you a few examples, but it's just a narrow scope of what is available to you if you just experiment. So feel free to take this and turn it into your own. You know, put your personality stamp on it rather than trying to uh, clone something that I do. Take it and make it your own. You know, these are all ideas that are for all of us. So um, keep that in mind moving forward and then let's use the rest of this series to kind of expand on that. Okay, so yeah, really what I wanted to do here was just give you a few examples of ways that you can use the thumb technique stylistically to give you a starting point. These are only just general ideas. I want you to take these techniques, internalize them, make them your own, and experiment with them. I'm gonna continue to use this series to show you a few other interesting things you can do with your thumb, and um, from there, it's all up to you. So let's just uh, experiment and have fun together.